Hi, good day everyone! This is Sir Jet for another episode of The Contemporary World. Today, our lesson is about the globalization of other things. So far, we have seen political globalization, economic globalization, cultural globalization, and social globalization. So far, uh, we have seen that this have spread around the world. But there are other things aside from those four that have globalized. And this is a very, very interesting lesson. So, let's get started. So, aside from political systems and economic systems, there are many other things that have spread on the planet and we will look at them or at least some of them in this lesson number one is plants have you ever wondered or have you ever imagined that plants have also spread from one corner of the earth to all over the earth you know, plants naturally grow in a certain place and not in another. Just like people, there are uh, places like the, the native place of Filipinos, which is the Philippines. But now, the Filipinos have spread all over. Same thing with plants. Some plants are naturally growing, originally growing in one place. And the term for that is endemic so agriculturists know this word it means originally from so when i say um uh like um bananas are endemic in the philippines so that means it's originally from our place so examples of endemic plants from central and south america do you know that the avocado that we have here chico strawberries in baguio city corn coffee um okra tomatoes tobacco papaya guava calabasa they are not originally growing here in the philippines yes they are originally from central and south america it's just the Spaniards who brought these plants here because uh, Central and South America were also their colonies and so they brought the products from that place to the Philippines and some of those uh, vegetables and fruits grew in our soil and so we have them grown today. Now endemic plants from the Far East, that's our place are rice, durian, duhat, abaca, lychee in uh, Thailand, uh, lanzones, rambutan, the carabao mango, sugarcane, and tea. But you will notice that uh, these plants are now grown in other parts of the world. But they are originally here, okay, in the Far East. Okay. From South Asia, do you remember this corner of Asia? This is uh, India and the neighbors. The original plants from that place is cinnamon. If you don't know yet, uh, cinnamon looks like this. It comes from the bark of a tree. So the powder that you uh, have on your cinnamon bread uh, actually is uh, part of a tree. Okay. And that tree grows naturally or originally in South Asia, in uh, Sri Lanka. But now uh, it's grown in other places as well. And the Indian tree, a favorite uh, ornamental tree you see in many uh, parks, is uh, of course from India. And the Indian mango, the green uh, sour mango, is not originally uh, growing in the Philippines, but it's from India. That's why it's called Indian mango. What we have here originally is the Carabao mango. Now from the Middle East, the original plants there are the dates, olives, 
pomegranate and fig uh, this is uh, how dates look like it's like giant raisins and they are from the Middle East but now uh, this some of the this uh, plants have uh, been uh, grown in other places outside their uh, original places why or how because of colonization these plants got dispersed to other places because of the colonizers uh, i've mentioned a while ago the manila acapulco galleon trade caused the mexican fruits and vegetables to land here in the philippines and uh, in the same way our tobacco and uh, rice and um, sugarcane in uh, Mexico and Central America because of the Manila Acapulco galleon trade. They were introduced to the Spanish colonies over there, but they were originally from our country. Because of colonization, plants got dispersed to other places. Okay, I've mentioned this already. Sugar tobacco, original here, grown there. Now, that's uh, how uh, sugar plants look like if you don't uh, know yet. And this is how tobacco plants look like. So they harvest the leaves, turn it into brown, and they become cigarettes. And they're originally grown here. As now, aside Another thing that globalized is language. There are uh, called birthplaces of languages. And uh, these birthplaces are uh, the only place where the language was spoken many, many years ago. Like Spanish is only spoken in Spain and uh, Portuguese in Portugal. Okay? And English is only spoken in England, not even in France during uh, Germany, only in England. And French is spoken in France. But because of colonization, these countries have spread their languages to their colonies. Like Spain, okay, colonized these places in uh, the Americas. So today, these places speak Spanish, like uh, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Argentina. Um, do you notice that in Miss Universe contests, the candidates from these places uh, would need an interpreter because uh, they can only speak Spanish. And that is the original place where the Spanish language is from. Okay? But now it has spread to other places. Uh, Portuguese language, okay, original from Portugal, but these are now the places where Portuguese is spoken. And Brazil, a very, very large country in South America, is the largest uh, Portuguese-speaking nation in the world. So much bigger than the uh, original place. Portugal, okay, so the language used to be confined in this small place is now spoken all over and this country even has the most more number of people from the motherland speaking the Portuguese language. French is spoken in a Quebec in Canada or Quebec, that's how they pronounce it, Quebec, and also in these places in Africa originally only in that corner of Europe and of course English is spoken everywhere um, most notably of course in the United States in Canada in Australia but the original uh, birthplace of the English language is just a little place here in Europe England but now it is spoken everywhere including in the Philippines. Do you know that, in, that the Philippines is the third largest English speaking nation in the world? Number one is India. There are more than one billion people in India speaking English. 
Number two is the United States of America, around 400 million English speakers. Then we are number three at around 105 million people speaking English. We have more English speakers here in the Philippines than in England. Yes, the birthplace of the English language only has around 65 million English speakers while we have 105 million speakers. So there are more people who can speak English here than in England. Fantastic. And uh, because of that, a lot of other people are trying to study the English language in the Philippines, like the Koreans, because they see it as the international business language. And so they need to learn the English language. Also, uh, the Japanese and the Chinese would like to learn English. So it is spreading, as you can see, not only uh, during the colonial period, but also in the modern times, in the present. The English language continues to globalize. Okay, so recently there are also Asian languages that are starting to spread globally. And uh, these are the Japanese language, or Nihongo, Mandarin, the Chinese language and Korean because uh, they also uh, use their language in making business deals and uh, some Filipinos would uh, have them as clients so some Filipino schools are now offering this as electives so we might see in the near future the spread of Asian languages in other places Number three thing that is globalizing is food and beverage. They have spread due to colonization, trade, migration, and other factors. Um, trademark food and beverage of many nations have spread worldwide. You know, some food are originally found in just one country. But now you can see a lot of restaurants and supermarkets worldwide that have specialized in uh, foreign food okay like uh, you go to a mall you would see an Italian restaurant or an Indian restaurant or a Korean uh, supermarket and and so uh, you go to another country there would be uh, the same uh, kind of specialty stores okay that you can find and they are offering food coming from a far away country. And uh, today, um, Coca Cola, you know, the soft drink brand, has penetrated almost all, if not all, the countries in the world. And they say that Coca Cola has uh, spread uh, to many countries better than how the gospel has spread. To many countries because some countries they say uh, still have uh, the Bible not welcome in their turf but coca-cola is welcome in that country and so coca-cola is more widespread than the Bible they say and this is one uh, fact that uh, indeed food and beverage have spread all over the world okay examples the hamburger is originally from Germany. Uh, it, it's uh, from a place called Hamburg. And some sailors from Hamburg brought that recipe to the United States. And the Americans asked the German sailors, Hey, why do you put bread or why do you put meat as a sandwich? Uh, what do you call that uh, kind of uh, food or sandwich? And they say, we don't know. We just uh, do it. Uh, just like what we do at home and they ask where is your home in Hamburg so that's how the name hamburger was invented so the Americans call it hamburger it's originally from Germany but you see it all over the world we have a lot of McDonald's branches worldwide the spaghetti has also uh, traveled far and wide um, they say it's originally from uh, Italy and it has spread all over the world 
Um, but uh, many contest that it's not originally from Italy, but it's from China. And Marco Polo, who traveled to China, just brought the recipe to Italy. And the Italians put, um, what's the red sauce? Tomato sauce on it. And it's now, it's how, it's, it's, uh, that's how it looks like today. Um, another one is pizza. It has spread all over the world. The original pizza is from Greece. And uh, they, they just put olive oil on bread. And that's it. And then the Italians made it a bit more fancy by putting some vegetables and tomato sauce on it. And that's the pizza that we know today. And it's all over the world. Sushi, the Japanese uh, food, is all, also popular now all over the world. And so is the kimchi, in, uh, from, originally from Korea. The pancit from China. Pies from the United States. Tortilla from Mexico, and also the nacho, the shawarma from Turkey. Wow, these things are making me hungry. Chocolates for dessert, originally from, uh, you know the chocolate plant? It's uh, originally from uh, Central America, and uh, it has been an ingredient uh, for the chocolates that we have today, popularized by the Americans. And the bibimbap from Korea. Wow, I'm very hungry. So we have seen that food and beverage is another thing that has globalized. Drinks also, Coca-Cola, coffee is originally from Brazil. They say that this, uh, the Starbucks logo is the Brazilian coffee goddess. Uh, tea, originally from uh, China. Uh, spread all over the world because of the British. They love drinking tea and all over the world you can see Lipton. Beer originally from Germany is all over the world also. And uh, vodka from Russia. The tequila from Mexico. You can see them in bars all over the world. Red wine from the Middle East popularized by France. It's also worldwide now. The soju from um, Korea okay, has also been popular all over. Now, sports is another thing that has globalized. You know, some sports are originally played in a certain place and just confined in that place. But now they have spread all over. Just like basketball volleyball and baseball these are original american sports but because of colonization and other things many more countries are playing these sports in england the original sport there is cricket and rugby and now they are popular in many uh, former british colonies like india and australia Taekwondo is originally from Korea, but now it is an Olympic sport. You know, when, when a sport becomes an Olympic sport, that means so many countries are playing it. The International Olympic Committee would decide which sports would be called Olympic sports. Some sports they deny to be Olympic sports because few countries play it, like uh, bowling. It's not yet an Olympic sport. But for Taekwondo being an Olympic sport, that means it is very, very popular now all over the world. Japan is famous for uh, Judo, Sumo, okay, Karate. And uh, China is famous for Kung Fu. And these are uh, also sports played worldwide. But they are originally from those countries and Thailand is the uh, originator of the Sepak Takrao but it's also uh, we have a version called the Sipa but we have a different ball our uh, uh, the one that we kick Filipino version is the uh, Tansan with straw <laughs> it's called Sipa but uh, this kind of version is originally from Thailand but it's now played in the Southeast Asian Games, so that means it's popular all over Southeast Asia. 
And uh, how, why did the sports or how did this sport spread? Due to colonization. That's one reason. Another one is mass media because uh, we see it on TV. We see some uh, coverage of those sports and we got interested and we follow those coverages. And so these sports have spread around the world. Okay, so they are now called world uh, wide sports and so when a sports becomes worldwide the nations of the world would form a governing body okay so as to regulate the playing of that sport all over the world example would be FIBA the International Basketball Association which uh, organizes basketball tournaments around the world in the different continents okay they are the ones who uh, set up how the tournament will be played who would be the qualified countries to play they also uh, accredit the referees they accredit the officials and uh, we have a worldwide body orchestrating how the sport is played worldwide and that is globalization for you okay and uh, they are even played in the Olympics. As I've mentioned a while ago, we have the International Olympic Committee uh, for the uh, mechanics and the regulation of the sport in the international competitions. Uh, this is a very interesting trivia. Do you know that there are over 300 million registered basketball players in China alone? Fantastic! If you want to play basketball, you have to register yourself. <laughs> Just like driving. If you want to drive a car, you need to go to the LTO and uh, get a license. Get yourself registered. So in China, they register their basketball players. And there are 300 million. How many Filipinos are there? Do you know? Just around 105 million. So there are a lot more basketball players in China than all the Filipinos put together. Amazing. And these are registered. Okay? There are other basketball players in China that are not registered. So can you imagine how many people are playing basketball in China alone? It is really a global sport nowadays. Uh, do you know the top three most popular sports in the world? Well, in terms of viewership, number one would be football. So many countries are crazy about football. Uh, in Europe, in South America, all over the world, they are crazy about football. It's like a religion in their country. Number two most popular sport in the world is swimming. In terms of viewership, I don't know uh, how many, but uh, wow, it's number two. More than basketball, the number three most popular sport in the world. So, as we have seen in this part of our lesson, sports is another thing that has globalized. Number five is religion. Okay, so religion originated in some place one small place or corner of the earth and it has spread all over the world in our time and you know that most of the world's major religions originated in Asia Judaism originated in Israel and that is since time immemorial because they say that is the religion of Adam and Eve Hinduism in originated in India and they cannot also trace who is the founder and uh, they say oh it's existing since time immemorial. Taoism is uh, the original religion in China and it has no uh, known founder also and uh, it's since it's, it was there in China since time immemorial. Confucianism is another a religion from China but although some people say it's not really a religion but a philosophy but nonetheless uh, it is attributed to Confucius who lived in China around 500 years before Christ 
and uh, Buddhism originated in India because uh, uh, Siddhartha Gautama Buddha is an Indian. He's not Chinese, he's Indian. And uh, he lived also the same time as Confucius. And today we see these religions spread to many places. Christianity originated in Israel, of course, from Jesus Christ, who, uh, who was born and he lived and he died on the cross, rose up from the dead after three days, and that happened in the first century of, uh, of uh, our time. Okay, so uh, Christianity has spread all over the world since then. Okay, and uh, lastly, Islam originated in Arabia around 500 years after Jesus Christ and we know Islam is a very big religion these days so these are the seven major religions of the world and all of them originated in Asia and today we will look at how they have spread worldwide Judaism has spread worldwide due to the Jewish diaspora which is the Jewish migration, they have spread all over the world, the Jews, because of uh, war, invasion, persecution in their homeland. The Jews were driven away and settled in other continents and they brought with them their religion. So the Jewish religion is all over the world. Who are the most notable Jews? Do you know these people? Yes, they are Jews. Steven Spielberg, the director of E.T. Albert Einstein is a Jew, but he grew up in Germany. His parents, his grandparents were uh, uh, Jews. Um, Adam Sandler okay, has Jewish roots also. Uh, who's this guy? Is this Kyle Korver? Uh, no, no, oh, he's uh, Zac Efron. Okay. And uh, I think his name is Drake. These are uh, celebrities in America, but they are um, of Jewish origin. Okay? I'm not sure if this is Drake. Uh, I'll check it out later. Okay. Hinduism has spread also worldwide. It's practiced mainly in India. Okay? And uh, they don't, the Indians really don't go out and spread their religion. But uh, some of their doctrines or many of their doctrines have spread out worldwide. Okay, examples of uh, Hinduism doctrines that are in our culture today are concepts of karma, reincarnation, the next life, the past life, the soulmate. The yoga exercises are from Hinduism. They are not really uh, Christian, but they are Hindu. Karma, the concept of uh, you, you do something bad, uh, something bad will come your way. That's karma. It's, it's Hindu doctrine. Reincarnation, if you die uh, and you're a bad boy, uh, you become a cockroach in your next life. But uh, if the cockroach becomes a good cockroach, he becomes a human in his next life. That is a Hindu religion, okay? And then the soulmate, two souls that are lovers centuries past, and uh, they die, and then their souls go all over the world and trying to look for one another, and then they met one another here in Malayan, and they say, oh, could you be my soulmate? That is actually a Hindu doctrine, but you don't know, maybe. All right, so they have spread all over the world. And do you know that the Beatles, uh, is probably the most popular Hinduism uh, member. One time in their life, they converted to that religion. You can see them visit a Hindu guru in India who taught them the doctrines of uh, Hinduism. That's why in some of their songs, they uh, talk about Hindu doctrines. If you're a Beatles fan, you study Across the Universe, um, My Sweet Lord, and uh, you can see there some Hindu doctrines uh, in between the lines. Taoism from uh, China 
okay, it is also spread worldwide. Okay? And today we see that the following in our culture, but they are of Taoism origin. The concept of good vibes, okay, positive and negative vibes. You know, one morning your friend will tell you, oh, I have a bad vibes today. Uh, or, uh, oh, uh, for good vibes, uh, I'm going to post this on Facebook. So vibes or vibration are actually the, uh, the a doctrine from Taoism that the universe is full of vibration and uh, they are either good or bad that will come your way, good or bad vibration for the day. Uh, feng Shui, we do that all the time huh? in the Philippines. We just don't notice it. Uh, the Bagua, you know that? Uh, the, the mirror that has eight sides. Uh, that is also of Taoism origin. And the eternal struggle of good versus evil. It's, uh, it is in the Pepsi logo and the, in the South Korean flag. And that is Taoism. Okay, the doctrine of Taoism says good and bad are struggling, fighting one another for eternity. And that is not actually Christian doctrine. Because in Christian doctrine, the good is the winner, the triumphant winner over evil. But in uh, Taoism, it's equal. It's an equal struggle. Confucianism is all over the world also because of uh, social media. Okay, because of um, the nice quotations coming from Confucius that are accepted all over the world because it's kind of cool and huh? like the golden rule uh, it's good the guy follow so many people follow the golden rule and do you know that Chinese martial arts the hand-to-hand -hand combat is actually from Confucius because there was a time when the Emperor, or when when Confucius was an advisor to the emperor, and Confucius was uh, anti-violence, so he advised the emperor uh, not to use weapons for the army. And then the uh, the emperor said, "How can we fight if I will ban and spears?" Confucius said, uh, "Learn hand-to-hand -hand combat," and so that's the origin of the Chinese martial arts. Okay, and here are the nice uh, quotes from Confucius. You may not know that they are from Confucius. You, you just think that they are just some nice uh, quotes you get from uh, a friend in Facebook. But they are actually from a guy who lived in China 500 years before Christ. Okay, so you can study those quotes. Buddhism from uh, Buddha originally from India but has spread practically in the entire East Asia and the mainland Southeast Asia uh, parts of the world and we see so many statues of Buddha in those places and in the homes of the people and even the uh, saying that uh, Buddha bless you uh, when somebody sneezes is from uh, Buddhism because uh, they believe that uh, when somebody sneezes it is a sign that he's going to get sick in the next few days uh, because uh, they don't know the vir anything about viruses yet but uh, they have observed that uh, when somebody sneezes the next thing that will happen is sickness so when somebody sneezes they will say a little prayer Buddha bless you okay and that's from Buddhism now, who are the world's most famous Buddhists? Uh, they have a Pope counterpart. They call it the Dalai Lama. But he died a few uh, years ago. I don't know yet uh, who is now the uh, new Dalai Lama. But he's a very famous world figure when he was still alive. And who is this? He's not the guy in the KFC logo. <laughs> he is actually Phil Jackson. He is an NBA coach. He is the coach of Michael Jordan. He is also the coach of Kobe Bryant. And uh, he is a Buddhist. 
okay and uh, he's probably the most famous Buddhist alive today Islam has also spread around the world originally from Arabia but it's, it has now spread to the Middle East North Africa um, insular Southeast Asia that means that's Indonesia and Malaysia and even to the Western world there are a lot of Americans and Europeans who are converting to Islam yes and uh, they are giving up Christianity just to be a Muslim and uh, when you ask them they say because uh, Islam is challenging uh, Christianity is uh, very lax why because uh, in Christianity you become a Christian only on Sundays after Sunday uh, it's back to your old uh, bad self but in Islam you have to be a Muslim 24 7 you have to pray five times a day not only on Sundays and you have uh, to uh, practice uh, a diet that is a uh, Islamic uh, diet and so Islam is part of your lifestyle it's gonna be it's gonna be the whole of your lifestyle uh, Islam but Christianity is just like a compartment in your lifestyle so it is actually one of the world's fastest growing religions in the Western world because they are very attracted to its strict and holistic discipline the one I explained to you a while ago so who are the most famous Westerners who converted to Islam okay one is a guy named Cassius Clay okay that's Cassius Clay and he uh, converted to Islam and changed Muhammad Ali another guy is a basketball player named Lou Alcindor and Lou Alcindor when he became a Muslim changed his name to Kareem Abdul Jabbar so these are the most famous Westerners who became Muslims and lastly Christianity has spread also worldwide it began with Christ and the first church in Jerusalem that we can read in Acts chapter 2 the disciples led by Peter after uh, Christ ascended to heaven uh, continued the work of Christ preached the doctrines of Christ and had a following in Jerusalem and they call themselves the first church and since then Christianity has spread all over the world and it has spread almost entirely okay oh, it has spread uh, to almost the entire world of all religions it, this is what this is the most aggressive in spreading the teachings to others that act of uh, sharing Christian doctrines to another who is a non-Christian is called evangelization and so this is what people do or this is what Christians do they evangelize okay so you may hear some churches sending missionaries abroad to evangelize the non-Christians in those places why are Christians doing this because they believe that Jesus commanded them to do so in Matthew chapter 28 in the Bible Jesus said to go and make disciples in all the nations of the world and so the Christians are following that command now in the 1990s that's around 30 years ago um, there is a place that the Christians call the 1040 window I think I was in college at this time and uh, this is what the, the Christian uh, churches are praying about to evangelize the 1040 window now the 1040 window is the last place on earth where Christianity has not yet been introduced to okay and where exactly is this why do we call it the 1040 window because it's 10 degrees north of the equator and 40 degrees north of the equator so we draw a box 10 degrees 40 degrees and it spreads from the far east to north africa and the countries that fall inside this window are the non-christian 
peoples, that's where you find the non-Christian peoples of the world. Because outside that window, uh, most likely the, the peoples are already Christians, like in Europe and in America. But inside this window, we see the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the communists. Okay, in China, in North Korea, they don't believe in any religion because they are communists. And uh, in the 1990s, the Filipino churches or the Christians all over the world are praying that missionaries these places and share the gospel. And uh, that's 30 years ago. And we have seen uh, what happened in the next 30 years. And indeed, uh, there are a lot of churches or a lot of missionaries who have entered these places and are now uh, spreading the gospel and uh, evangelizing the people in these places. Okay, 30 years afterwards, I think a lot more Christians can be found inside the 1040 window compared to 30 years ago. Okay, and we have seen that that is globalization. The spreading of religion to the ends of the earth. So religion is another thing that has globalized. Okay? So it's not only politics, it's not only economics, but also a lot more things have globalized. What have we seen today? We have seen the globalization of plants, of language, food and beverage, sports, and religion. And that's why we have this course, SS33, The Contemporary World, so we can talk about the spread of a lot of things called, uh, and in totality, the spreading of all these things is called globalization. All right? So, this is Surjet. I hope you learned a lot today. Until next episode, see you around.